So it seemed like year after year, we kept saying, trust me, next year, Devontae Parker, he's going to break out. You know, that's going to be the year where he finally puts it all together. And we kept waiting, and it just seemingly kept not happening. Not because he was playing poorly, but because he wasn't really staying healthy. I mean, you know, we would watch him. I think we all watched tape of him, and we're like, man, when this guy is great, he's great. But he struggled a bit with consistency, and he struggled mostly with just staying on the field. In his first four seasons, the most games he had played in was 12. He had never had more than 800 snaps uh, in a season. He had always had under 800 snaps in a season. Uh, but he finally had 905 snaps last year, and it was very fun to watch as he really showed that he can be successful throughout large periods of time in a football game. One of the things I do like about him is his route running. Uh, I do feel like his route running is underrated. That's not really something people talk about with him, but his route running can be very good, and this is an example where it's going to be a go route. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. There is a safety deep, but, but just one safety deep, so it's essentially a one-on-one -on -one matchup, uh, and what's going to happen is that right when this ball is snapped, he's going to just so subtly, slightly move closer towards the middle of the field. And in doing this, it's going to get that uh, Buffalo defender to sort of suspect that that's where he's going to be going. You notice how his hips are kind of opened up in that direction. He's expecting this to basically be a run over the middle. He's expecting this to be some sort of a slant route. Uh, and so he's wary of that, especially, uh, you know, slant routes against this type of coverage are not the worst thing in the world. But then he's going to basically just fake as though he's going in that direction and then run deep. And he just completely burns his assigned man and is able to get a huge gain. And that's really what Parker mostly excels at is those big plays. He's going to get you chunk plays. He might not necessarily be uh, a Jarvis Landry type where he's going to get 100 catches year after year. But he's going to get you some big catches. And that's what's, uh, what, what's really valuable with him. I think this next play will probably show, well, it'll show a lot, actually. I'll, sh I'll show the play, and then I'll talk about it and the importance of it. Uh, it's going to be similar to the last play. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's running a deep route. There is a safety deep, but uh, notice how right after the ball is snapped, the ball is going to be thrown in his direction, and he's not really open. I mean, there's very little separation. There's basically no separation. So you'd think this is a bad uh, throw to make in some areas, but... It's not going to be. Parker leaps up, makes the catch, and stays on his feet and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. I mean, that's a Madden-level play. So, okay. I mean, fantastic play, right? Sure, whatever. But who cares? You know, we all know that, at least at this point, okay, so he can make a great play. He's a great player. But there's more to it than that. I think part of the reason why, e even when he was healthy, he wasn't getting as many big games was because guys weren't throwing him these types of balls. And I think it really wasn't until Ryan Fitzpatrick, who is fearless, was kind of giving him those opportunities. Could we really see, oh, that's actually a good decision because he can make a lot of catches in those tight contested areas. I mean, the reality is you didn't really see him coming to his own until it, it honestly probably was week 11 against Buffalo, the first game I showed you. Uh, that was really the first game he kind of uh, you know, came into his own. He had 135 yards. He didn't have a single game of over 100 yards prior that season, but he finished the final seven games with four games of over 100 yards. And a large part of it was Fitzpatrick just saying, hey, I'm going to keep throwing it up to you and you keep catching it. Well, you know, we can make this work and we can make this work pretty well. Like this plays and it's just an insane example where it's going to be, it's a cover three zone, but you know, uh, because of the, the situation, it's, they're playing very far deep. It's a third down and 13 right here. Philadelphia just trying to not give up the first down. And Parker, he's just going to run deep. That's just kind of his idea is they're just going to send him deep. So he runs deep. Fitzpatrick looks in his direction. He's just going to, you know, fire one and send a prayer. And it's going to be answered as Parker leaps up and makes the catch. And it's kind of hard to see from that angle. I'll show the other angle where it actually is going to show a pretty good example of what exactly happens. Where again, you know, Fitzpatrick, he steps back. He takes a hit but gets the ball off. And you look how Parker just kind of uh, boxes him out right there. He just has great vision for the ball and is able to make the catch. And that's really what it comes down to. It's not because he's taller. Yes, he is 6'3", but there's plenty of guys who are 6'3 or taller that are in the league, you know? Uh, Mike Evans is 6'5". Julio Jones is also 6'3". I think Parker's a better jump ball receiver than either of them. Honestly, I really do. And uh, I think the tape backs that up. 
for one thing, he can go up and get it. But for the other thing, what what really what it comes down to is his vision, is the way that he tracks those balls. And I think that, you know, whatever chemistry that he created with Fitzpatrick really came into their own, you know, they came into their own together. And it's it's kind of a perfect match, actually, I think, with Fitzpatrick and Parker. And, you know, seems like eventually Tua will be the guy. So hopefully he can create some sort of chemistry. And quite frankly, I mean, having a guy like Parker should be great for Tua. Because it's not just I'm going to, you know, throw lob one up and hope for the best. It's a play like this where it's going to be a cover one play. And then Parker, he's on the sideline. He's going to be running deep towards the end zone. Uh, and watch how right after this ball is snapped, you're going to notice that. So, you know, this isn't terrible coverage. Uh, the Philadelphia player who's in charge of covering him, he is looking, trying, doing his best to make sure he can track the ball. He's looking back towards the ball. Uh, and the, the significance of that is that there is going to now be a window where Parker can maybe get open. But it's difficult. I mean, he's going to have to, the ball is going to have to be thrown over the defensive back, which is not so easy. Not to mention there is a safety who's running over, so you don't have too much time to make this play. But this is going to be, at first, it looks like it was just a great throw, but it's not necessarily that. There's actually a much bigger window to make that throw because Parker can go up and make that kind of catch. For a typical receiver, you only have maybe, you know, uh, a foot to try to, you know, a room to try to make that throw with. But with Parker, you have like a full yard worth to try to make that uh you know, throw through because he can go up. It just exp expands those windows, which is uh, so crucial. And it, again, stuff like that, I'm not going to say that Parker is like the best receiver in the league or anything, but there are certain situations where I would take him over every single receiver in the league. And if I need uh, someone to get a jump ball, you know, if I need a 15 yard play, he might be the guy. I really think that that's, again, People are going to say I'm being hyperbolic or getting excited because he had some good games last year. I don't think so. I think this is this is who he is. And again, you know, his route running isn't as good as some of these top t tier guys yet. Maybe he can get there. But as a whole, I mean, uh, again, and I'm not trying to say he's only a jump ball or deep threat receiver, but he just does those things so well. It's so much in his wheelhouse that uh, that's what makes him, in my opinion, a true number one guy. But OK, enough about that. Let's get into what we all want to talk about. The game that kind of put him on the map, so to speak, was the game against uh, where he really just got the better of Stephon Gilmore. And I, I want to show this play because this play is going to show the disrespect people have had towards Devontae Parker uh, prior to uh, really, I think, this game. Where what's going to happen is that Miami's running that concept. Simple concept, something you see guys do all the time. So, you know, Gilmore is going to say, hey, I know what this concept is. They're going to try to get me to run deep. They're going to have a receiver run shallow. They're going to hit the shallow receiver, pick up some yards, maybe, or maybe they'll throw it deep. But, uh, you know, I have a plan for this. And watch how he's going to kind of just, at first, sort of, you know, just think about maybe running over there. If the ball is going to get thrown in that direction, he's going to run over and knock it away or maybe get a pick six. I mean, this is something Gilmore has done in the past. But the problem is, typically when he does that in the past... He's going up against receivers who are not as good compared to him. You know, someone that he feels confident that he can come back. You know, he still has five yards now on Parker. And he's thinking, okay, Parker, he's a big guy, but whatever. I'm faster than him. However, watch how Parker is just able to blow by him because of that. Gets wide open and makes the play. And I think at that moment, Gilmore said, okay, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe I'm dealing with a different kind of animal than I realized. I think this play is actually the best play of explaining what went wrong for Gilmore on that game and what went right for Parker. Honestly, I might make a whole video just on Gilmore's failures to cover Parker on this game because it was pretty interesting to watch. Um, but really what you're going to see Parker do is that, you know, you think, okay, Parker, you're 6'3", you're a big guy. You know, use some contact at the line, uh, get past Gilmore. But instead, what's going to happen on this play is it is press coverage, but he's going to just run around him. He doesn't want to create contact at the line whatsoever. And so that's what he does. And Gilmore says, OK, great. You're not going to get any separation from me. And he doesn't. You know, again, no separation whatsoever. Gilmore is really good at not allowing separation. And, you know, Parker, uh, while he is fast, he's not, you know, he's not going to be able to blow by Gilmore. He just isn't. 
But as we've established in the past, Parker doesn't need a ton of separation. He just needs a little bit and a, a ball with some air under it so that he can go up and get it. And especially because Gilmore, to make sure that there's no separation, he had to turn his head a little bit. So again, that vision, it's a massive vision advantage for Parker. And he's able to go up and make the grab and get the ball inside the 30. And you know, let's be honest, if Parker didn't have this game, the Patriots, uh, they win it. And they end up with the bye week as opposed to Kansas City. Now, I still think Kansas City probably wins the Super Bowl. That's just what I think. But uh, it would have been a pretty interesting wrinkle effect. And, you know, it was a big game at the time. Probably the biggest uh, NFL game of Parker's career. So to to kind of have this this moment, I think, was very it was it was very good for him to really show up in a big moment. And I think it, it, it says good things for the Dolphins as a whole. And Parker is someone who, he's not getting a ton of attention now, but trust me, uh, in a couple of years, if the Dolphins make the playoffs, or even if they don't, uh, I still think he's going to be getting a lot more attention. So that's what I think, especially because he's just, he's just so fun to watch. I mean, really, being able to make those jump balls, that's just a blast to watch. But but anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. How good do you think Parker is? Uh, always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.